Wednesdays and I hope you also know that we do drop a video a minimum of one new video a day every day 365 days a year here at Two Gun Pixie so please hit that subscribe button and that notified bell and you'll never miss another one of our daily episodes and today's daily episode uh, I don't know this game is uh, part of a, of, a, of, a, of a game that's been going on and I don't know who to call to talk about this game. So you and me are going to talk about it. But before that, we're going to have to find out what in the Pixies box. All right, everyone. So thank you for joining me, and I'll see you all down at the table. Ghostbusters 2 by Cryptozoic Entertainment. <laughs> you may have seen a few of the videos we've done on the Ghostbusters 1 board game. This is a standalone. I, I'm pretty sure, I'm positive, I'll find out when I uh, check into it, but I'm pretty sure it's compatible with the other game. Um, but we'll find out, right? So this looks pretty good. It uh, looks exactly like the other game, which is more of an homage to the to the uh, comic book strip of Ghostbusters. Very cool. All right, so let's uh, let's get things started because I know our main man, the incomparable Fu Manchu, is very excited. He loves ghosts and goblins. <laughs> All right, Fu, let me get this blade on your mind here. Thank you very much. And now let's get you to a safe spot. Fu Manchu, everyone, the incomparable. Fu Manchu. Now, getting down to the nitty gritty here. Please, everybody, always cut away from yourself. And there we go with the plastic off. Make it rid of a little bit of that glare there, huh? But this, wow. You remember the movie, I hope. Well, I'm quite sure you don't need to know the movie to, to enjoy the game. But yeah, you got Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Ecto-1A. And each of the Ghostbusters have uh, two stands. One of them, one of them with Proton Pack. And one with the slime blower. Ah, cool, cool. Very nice. All right, now let's... Enough of the box. Enough of that, right? Let's get to the nitty-gritty. Let's get to the meat of this. Okay, so once again... As you expect from a box of the size, we have an album size rule book, which I hate. But you all probably know that by now. So, looks like this nice little mini story here in the beginning. There was, uh, with a comic strip actually in the Ghostbusters 1 board game. And uh, yeah, everything, everything is looking very similar. But I don't see this, I don't see stackable ghosts. If you, uh, if you know the first game, they're, uh, they're a ghost that when they meet, the two of them join into a, a larger one, and then there's a third larger one. So there's no version of that here that I see. 
But otherwise, uh, again, if you're familiar with the first game, this rule book looks like it's set up exactly the same. And I didn't have a problem with the with the rule book from the first game. Oh. Stacking it? Hmm, that would be new. I remember that from the first game. Some more of the... Oh, there's some pictures. Yeah, this does, uh, looks, back is different, I think, but yeah, it looks pretty much what I remember from the first one. And now we have, <laughs> we have our boards and our tokens, so let's, let's dive right into this. out easy enough I gotta double check but these actually do seem a little bit thinner I think than the first one maybe maybe I'm wrong maybe it's just been a while but it popped out easy enough didn't tear or anything you see already that they are indeed double-sided the first game was also so we have more easily pop outable tiles here yeah these things definitely feel thinner than the first game definitely I don't feel like I need to check, but I will. I'll check later. Okay. Here we go. Some more you know, terrain. You're going to put these out, map them out according to the scenario that you're playing. This helps decide. If it's the same as the first game, then this helps decide, like, randomness of where ghosts are appearing, which is very cool. Here are some tokens for maneuvers, line of sight, if you get slimed. So we get a slime, there's a slime blower token. From the ESP cards, Xena cards. Designed uh, from Duke University by Professor Xena. Okay, now, rich history. You should check out Duke University's parapsychology lab from the 30s and 40s. Amazingly fun stuff went on there. Okay, now this, you know what this is. If you had the first game, then you know what this is. What the minis look like. <laughs> oh, when a game comes with minis, those are always the most important things that anyone wants to see. Oh, wow. Put this in a better position. Okay, well, you can't miss Statue of Liberty head. There is uh, the rest of her head. Where's her crown? Oh, the crown's on the other side, I think. So you got this. Is there two layers? Yes, there are two layers, and there's the crown. First game is the same way. So there. <laughs> I wonder if the guys actually fit inside here. I guess they do. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That is very cool. Nice way. I like the way they stored it there so as to not take up too much space. Ecto 1A. Yeah. I think it has a little bit better detail, actually, than the one in the first game. But I also like the way the one in the first game is all white. This one, they didn't go that far. But that's cool. Looks nice. I'm happy with it. I'm not going to bother taking these out. You see what these are. These are plastic rings to put around the base of the characters. 
Now this is another one of the big ones. Wow. This isn't bad. Pretty good. Look at that face. Face not even a mother could love. Give me a hug, mama! <laughs> And, uh, okay, well, let's see some of the weird ones, right? Like, this finger puppet one. <laughs> That's the whole thing of slime. That looks like a character or something could fit in there, like maybe this ugly little bastard. I'm riding the slime. Oh, check that out. See that detail? See, like, arms? Almost that looks like an arm. Flexing a muscle. The head right there. I don't think it is, but that's... <laughs> that's what it kind of looked like. And this is a better look up on the little guy that I just put in there. I don't even know if I'm supposed to put anyone in there. It just looked like you could. So I did. I got the rest of the... Oh, no, that's another one of the ghosts. Oh, this is the mailman ghost. So that's uh, it's a mouth on his belly. But where are the rest of the go? Oh, what's this? Is this a flying polyp from the mythos? No. All right, but where are where are the guys? Yes, they're not on this board. But what's this though? Gotcha. <laughs> There's another big one. One of the guys, the slime blower. Looks like another one. The slime blower. This is not. This looks like Vigo. No pictures of Vigo. But, uh, oh, here. Okay, what's this? What's this? There goes uh, the rest of the guys. Now, there's uh, there's two expansions packs I uh, I saw for this game. One is Lewis Tully as a Ghostbuster, and the other is Slimer as a Ghostbuster, which I. I do think he did do in the cartoon show, though I'm not familiar with their adventures in the comic books. Let's get a look at that proton pack. I haven't shown that off the back of the bit. Oh, nice. It's a nice detail. I, I, I gotta say, it's maybe not the best miniatures I've seen, but they're good. I know I've seen worse. I, I would rate these as okay. And that's just someone that doesn't paint them. You know, if we if I painted them, who knows? I, I may look at them in a different way. Maybe I'd see things that I, I, I wouldn't notice since I don't. Well, that's definitely Egon, right? You can tell by the hair. Okay, I show off a flying snake. There you go. Pretty cool. And uh, here's something I didn't show off yet. This is a brain thing, like a play Dungeons and Dragons. It's like a foot eater. Mm 
here's another. There's another one we haven't seen. He doesn't want to be seen. He won't come out. I got him. Some people just don't shut up. Look at that mouth on that. Actually, that's nice. It's nice detail. It is hollowed out behind those bar teeth in its head. Very cool. So there's three of them. Look at this guy before. I don't think we did. I don't even know what to make of that. He's got a gun. And he's got a tongue like a liquor from Resident Evil. And then here, this is a ghost with a cane. That's why it needs a cane, it keeps falling down. Some vomiting elderly ghost? <laughs> um, okay, well, let's, we got a bunch of these. Let's see what these are. Okay, get one out. Yeah. I don't know. Makes me think of a, of a roper from D and D. It's more of a stand, too. Weirdly shaped stand. And then I don't think we've looked at this guy yet. This girl. Oh, <laughs> this is the ghost nanny that stole the baby. That well, it was uh, Janos. Janos, where are you from? See up this side. Okay, and uh, we got the dice. And the stand. Stand. Big deal. Oh, the dice. Oh, different. I remember that. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah but they have a different symbol, of course, with Ghostbusters 2. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Those decks are nice. And uh, the last thing, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the cards. Alright, we got a couple of different decks here. In this bag, we got the goo pile. There for the moment. Events. I remember that from the first game. And equipment. The Proton Pack Mach 2. That must be from the comic. Proton Cannon. Septic. Mini Bar Containment Vortex. Multi Dimensional Castellator. Portable Quonset Hut. The Necronomicon. Codex of St. Thelopius. Proton Pistol, Miniature Slime Blower, The Ghost Bomb, Boston Caster, Slime Net, The Electro Goggles, The Ecto Defibrillator, The Mobile X-Ray Machine, The Mini Ectoplasm Analyzer, Of course the Ghost Beacon, Prototype Trap, Portable Dimension... Portable Dimensional Meter, The Ooze Vacuum, Subharmonic Acoustic Container, Wireless Trap, Magicians, Martyrs, and Madmen, Magical Paths to Fortune and Power, The Nameless Book, oh, that must be based on uh, Robert E. Howard's uh, Black Book of Unjunt, End of the World Tomb, Spate's Catalog of Nameless Horrors. Now we have Tobin's Steer Spirit Guide. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at events. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, so we're just going to look at one event card. I don't want to spoil anything. I don't know if this does. Hi, Piper Manhattan. A ghost is trying to lure people to it. Leave the goo pile on the map until the event is finished. Get out of the line of si get out of line of sight this space by the end of the next round. Two rounds. Success. Each Ghostbuster who is not within line of sight of this space gains three XP. Failure, each of us supposed to be the line of this site gains a minus one line of sight token. Hmm. Consequences. It's cool to have consequences in a game. And now the legendary goo pile we've been hearing about. 
event, event, event. Equipment, equipment, equipment. Huh. I think some specific ones. You remember from the movie, this lime powered toaster? Hmm, polarity, rectification tripod A and B, and the occult reference net. Oh, and then you got the trackers. These trackers. And they go on here. They go on here. There's a lot of cars. It's like a lot more than I remember from the first game. Hmm. Okay, let's check this out. Alright, so these are divided up. Let's go over them, shall we? So we have the character cards. So the first game, you're gonna take uh, these little sliding clips. You're gonna keep them down here. So you get experience and you can level up. And this is what happens when you achieve those levels. And we see that there's a proton. There's a proton and there's a slime side. And information on the back about Peter Venkman. Level one, level three. Uh, Explain to you what's going on with those powers, those abilities at that level. So the same thing for the rest of them. Proton pack, slime blower, Egon. <laughs> for Ray. And then you got the proton and the slime. And then for our man, Winston. There we go. And now... Over here, these are, oh, okay, look at this, we got class two ghost class, oh, these are the ghosts, these are the ghosts, all the ones I was just showing you, street creeper, snakehead, oh, that's what he is, jail jaw, the brain matter, there's a lot more ghosts than this in the first one. Sore throat. Granny Gross, a haunted human. Haunted human. Male fraud, the mailman. Oh, the one with the gun was an ex cop. I get it. Superplasm. Hyperplasm. Grandplasm. Tony. Oh, the Scolari brothers. The Scalari brothers. That was a fun scene. Yeah, Janos Poha as, uh, as the nanny. Oh, so yeah, mini boss. I didn't wasn't noticing that. So these ones are mini bosses. The first game didn't have mini bosses. The Megaplasm, the Washington Square Ghost, and then of course Vigo. Here's Vigo. <laughs> Nice, yeah, they definitely have a lot more than the first game. And these would be the scenarios then, right? Yeah. So, let's show you the one scenario. I don't want to give too much away. Scolari Brothers Campaign Scenario 1, Pop Ghost the Weasel. So this will show you uh, what you need to do to get through the campaign, to win the campaign, uh, or end the campaign, and then what's going to happen if it's a success or a failure. Hmm... And with the goo timer at the bottom. Okay, one more quick one. The Washington Scare Campaign, scenario number four. Fistful of Liberty, baby. <laughs> and uh, these are also. Oh, these are something else. Oh, scenarios. Campaign and scenarios. This is what one of the scenarios looks like. Vigo campaign scenario one, Monster Mash. Yeah, they definitely seem to have gone a little bit deeper, or at least extended a little bit more, uh, the way the campaigns and everything run from the first game. Oh, but I'm very excited about this. I'm very happy. I'm a big, huge Ghostbuster fan. So, my friends, please, if you, uh, if you enjoy Ghostbusters as much as I do, check out the Ghostbusters game, and check out the Ghostbusters 2 by Cryptozoic Entertainment. I'm your buddy Big Johnny G for 2 Gun Pixel Presents Legendary Gaming, and my friends, I am out of here. <laughs>